How are you today? Actually, I'm pretty good because I got many gifts today from the mailman. I got two 70s Philips turntables. Wow, and give me one. I, yeah, hang on a second. I show you all, but I've got four now. Right on. Now we're cooking. Oh, yeah, I have one of those. So don't give me. Oh, you sent it? Yeah, hold on for one second. Check this out. Turntables. See, look, I, I have mine right here. I'll open it up. So we can have a turntable TV. Look at this. It runs on batteries and it's a Philips. Excellent, excellent. So this one. Don't, don't, doesn't it make you mad that there's no way you could be like unique and cooler than me because I'm like, oh, I've got that too. <laughs> it's okay. I don't care. I don't care. Mine's are all orange and yellow and. Red. Well, I have an so orange one too. It's just at Ollie's apartment. He, he never gave it back to me when I moved into my own apartment. No, I love that stuff. And it's amazing that you still get the needles for it. Like, check out this one. This one is like really cool. Yeah, I've seen those ones. And then you just pop it up here. That's, uh, it's a little bit sturdy in here. But then it just unfolds like that. Yeah, I know that model. It's great. Yeah. And also the sound really is amazing. Yeah, I have, the needle is still great. I have that one. That one's at, well, um... Oops. It's a little noise, excuse me. Sorry. Um, no, I need to get, like, a Techniques for the studio or something. I'm really, I'm really mad because last night I was DJing for a little bit at the concert. And, mm -hmm. um, I left. I, I had played this Hildegard Neff song. That in yeah. In the yeah. Well, so I, I played that on, on vinyl and I had the cover up behind me when I was playing and I left it at Bassey. So I need to get mm. that because I love that mm. record. I just love the cover. Yeah. Even. But um, she's kind yeah, of. I need to have that too. She's like kind of like Barbra Streisand meets uh, Marianne Faithful later of Germany. <laughs> yeah, completely. But also. Her discography is so different. She can do the opera style. She yeah. can do that psychedelic. And just also, it's so charming how she pronounces English when she sings in English. Yeah. Like holiday time and stuff. Yeah. It's so that she, she, she just keeps her flavor everywhere. And just when you, when you can understand all the German lyrics, they're really deep and they're really good. It's not, some, some songs might sound like a Schlager, but it's, different to the other crap you hear actually from the other time in that era so she was really sort of progressive in that part it's all good mm -hmm. and i got another two goodies today because i got lucky at ebay so i'm a proud owner now of that this one. seven inch yeah and right this on. one yeah oh uh, yeah i remember when we you know the the hide and seek one mm -hmm. came out the exact same time as uh, that band, that awful band, The Offspring. Oh my God! You gotta keep them separated. That's that song, and there mm -hmm. was like some Nine Inch Nails record, and I remember on Hate Street in San Francisco, like everybody, the record companies were tripping out because we were the number one single in San mm -hmm. Francisco for like three weeks straight. We were selling like, this is insane, but we were selling like 85 or 90 copies a week in each store just off people buying them. Mm. It was insane, you know? What? How many were produced at that time? I Maybe just a thousand, but it was like really nuts, you know? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's amazing. It's cool. But just local. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crap, but... um. There's nothing I could do about that stuff, you know, like, we just always tried, I always tried to record any way that I could, you know what nice. I mean? Like, I never, when I think about singles, like, our singles, those are just seven inches, there's a difference, mm. kind of, because when I think about singles, I think about, like, the, the charlatans doing, the only one, I know. that, that song, that's like a fucking single, you know what I mean? Do, mm. you, do you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah, I know, I know. 
it's like big and it sounds good in a club or something you know it's got crazy organs and all that stuff we're not really a singles band no but those are just at least well probably at the time when people bought it in the time you released it it was just normal to buy it and there were really true fans but just at that time they yeah. didn't even know that you exist so now it's of course something cool to have and just when you listen to it now on the new singles it, release on the double cd you know the whole time but it's cool to have it oh yeah um but i remember like i had a sponge with this like paint that i thinned out to do like mm. a color splash on those <laughs> did them all like psh, 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 making the xerox covers just creeping around yeah the, all the tie-dye ones yeah for my friend this just this chinese guy some some like super brainiac Chinese guy, Mike Toy. Mm. He made a little record. He was like silly. He was like he was the one that put out Space Girl on vinyl. Oh, See, because cool. what happened was, um, you know, we started playing it. The first time we played, like after that, people started offering me record deals, like Warner Brothers. First day, we mm. played first time. They were just like, dude, started talking to me, and then eventually this guy, not human, came around, and he was just like man, I've been listening to music, you know, like every, mm. every day since the Beach Boys released In My Room. He's like, you're absolutely, because I was, you know, there's like a thousand songs I recorded that I never even showed anybody, but there's so much stuff. I spent, yeah. I spent my whole 20s in the studio, just nonstop. Mm. Every, it, like, it's just like here, like every day, right when I came in up from the bicycle, I, I made something up that's kind of cool. Um, Oh, definitely. And when you've got the options to immediately record it. Yeah, but also, so cool. anyways, this and guy... And I just demo need a studio. This guy, this guy was like, it was a big deal. He's like, you got to do this for real, man. See, you got to you gotta go for, for for real, make history right now. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, uh, see, I want to just teach myself how to use recording studios. And he's like, no, dude, you got you to gotta be a producer. And they tried to get me to sign this contract that was like, we'll help you out you know, pay your rent and all this stuff and get you gear and shit. But, um, we want to own 50% of your money for all time. Like everything you make mm. from any which way. And I was just like, fuck you. But still like I'd gotten into it, like recording. So they sent me to this place called poolside and I was working on, you know, like wisdom and stuff off methadone or that shit. Mm. At the same time, that, so we did these recordings and I didn't finish them there. So he let me use his, he had a whole recording studio. He let me use the studio to do overdubs and what I would do every day under the pretext of, of, of uh, recording these overdubs is I'd make a whole new song. So he'd come in and I'd go, mm. I'd have it mixed down on a cassette or, or a dad or something. I'd go, dude, just check out this song that I just made up. And he'd go, oh, well, that's interesting. He would take it home and play it because his, his opinions, he would always like have to use his wife or his friends to go, what do you think of this? And they would mm. go, that's fucking amazing. And he'd go, isn't it? Like he, would, he wouldn't have an opinion unless somebody else liked it. Mm. Like he would, he, he was almost like German that way. He would never offer up his opinion unless somebody else was offering up an opinion. Oh, that sucks. Because <laughs> he doesn't want to look weird. Mm. Be uncomfortable. So... Mm. But so every day I would do that and I never got around to overdubbing or fixing the other songs. So it was like this, it was like a thousand and one nights, like the, the guy, the, the lady, you know, the husband's going to kill her and she's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, just let me tell you the story. And if, it, you know, and she would never finish, you know, finish the story till the next day, till the next day, till there's a thousand mm -hmm. stories. I did that with songs. So I kept being in the studio going, just check this out. And every day we go, fuck, this is as like, good as anything you've ever make up, made up. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm really having a blast, but I'm already on to this next thing. So mm. crazy. And I would even bring, <laughs> I'd bring other bands in to the studio. Mm. Like I recorded the whole hollow body record and named them and stuff and did like all this other shit for other people. I was like always trying to, mm. you know, I used to put on shows like every week at all these clubs of just bands, call it Soundgasm. And just trying mm -hmm. to make shit happen. So crazy. And, and you know, like people don't even know. The, when when Bomb Records offered me a record deal, you know, the first thing I was just like, well, while we're talking about your dumbass record deal, let's put out some seven-inch singles. Mm 
like here I want to mm. put out all the bands in my block so I put out like yeah. I did that tangible box set see we mm. didn't we didn't even have a contract yeah yeah we didn't even have a contract see what, what I, I just looked him in the eye and I said well you 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 are just like every other record company even though you're you're fucking indie you're just trying to fucking rip me off so while we're haggling about this and I prove that you're a dickhead and just trying to use me too let's just put out all mm. this stuff in good faith so first thing I did the first thing I did with Bomp was just like, fuck it. I'll put out 10 other people's bands. Mm. You know? Completely different yeah. than other people. And so many people, I know so many people, you know, like Red House Painters got signed just right down the street from one of our shows because 4AD came to sign us and they were just like, I can't work with that guy. He just not down with it. You know, and all these other bands and every single fucking band, it was only, you know, everybody is only into like they're lucky if they help one band out. Mm. It's such bullshit, man. I have helped so many people. It's not even funny. I helped like yeah. fucking hundreds. Yeah, but it has, it's something in, in you. If you have it or you don't have it. Well, it scares people too. Yeah. They're just like, why do you want to help me? Cause I tell people all the time. I'm like, fuck, I'll set you up. Let's, let's, let's make a record happen or something. And people are just like, uh. like the weirdest thing is, you know, I, how many people have not jumped on that deal with me and they go to get some record deal, but you know how fucked they are immediately once they find mm. out th that they're fucked and they, that somebody else owns everything, you know, all they can do is once, once that contract, they're under contract, they don't know how to get out of it. And so they're just like, mm. fuck, they can't record anymore, make any records and the band breaks up. It's like every single band you can even fucking think of. The worst thing that could happen to you is you get a record deal. Because they make your record, doesn't matter how good it sounds, they're like your fucking Sarah Tusek or something, right? And no matter how good it sounds, if it doesn't sell so much and then you're going to get ripped off, then fucking mm. these, this, these jokers are going to like own you and you're not going to be able to make records. Of course, she won't care because she's like, she's a year older than me, so she's like 45. Yeah. You know? Mm. So, but I think it's good that, you know, when you're a certain kind of lady, it doesn't even matter that you're 45 and you're playing music. Nobody will even notice. No. A lot of those girls that, that you think are younger are way older. Mm. Okay, so what's on your mind? On my mind? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny because I have people call No, up. it's cool that it works again. I'm really happy that finally just that little hack helped. You need to go into your computer screen and look at your actual volume of your microphone because you max out so hardcore. I'm, I'm super loud. Well, no. Oh, I'm, when you talk loud, all of a sudden it just like blows out my stereo. Oh. So it's your distortion. It's my distortion. Just just hang on a second because I can the microphone just build. Is it better now? That's too quiet. Hello? Check, check. Too quiet. Too quiet? What the heck is going on? Another one? Because I can do an internal headphone. Check, check. This one? A little bit louder. Hello? Okay. <laughs> no, I can't. That's, That's perfect. That's perfect. Oh, this one? How no. is this? Is this better? That's pretty good. Let's see. Now talk. Because that, that That's good. Logitech oh. external camera has a built-in microphone. Okay. So I have two options. Because the laptop is too far away, it's under my desk. Okay. It's hooked, hooked up to a big one. So what are we going to do? We're going we're gonna to look for new, new bands? Because you're helping out with Dead TV too, right? A little? Sure, sure. But, well, um, yeah, absolutely. So we're... we're I, go ahead. I, I, I know shitloads of good new bands. I know you do. Like even yesterday, the band you pro that was the oscillation, right? Who yeah, played? I think. That, I think I, I think they're fantastic. It's sort of a little bit crowd rocky and yeah, psychedelic, yeah. electronic. It's pretty cool. I have really tons. I want to see those guys live. I have tons of that their stuff. I think I got you sent a ton of that stuff. Let me see what this does. I'm gonna. Let me see. Why don't you tell people about that band, and we'll play a track in a second. Well, oh, I really can't tell so much about that band, but they're from the UK, and they released two albums so far, and the last one got released this year, and they played last 
evening at Bassie's in Berlin with another band, Emerald something, I think. And I'm pretty sure Anton's gonna play a track and you're gonna dig it. It's a little bit crowd rocky, it's electronic, it's psychedelic, but it has a really, it's really good drum section. I don't know if everything is electronic or if it's um, handmade. Handmade? But it's perfect music to drive. Handcrafts. <laughs> it's, 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 you have to listen to it loud and in the car and by night. What kind of car do you have? I've got a Volkswagen Rabbit. Okay. Black one. I think a big skull would look great on the top or on the Hood. front. <laughs> but it's cool. It's fast. So it goes like 205, I think. And my record was last year to Berlin, like from here. It's I think it's exactly 620 kilometers and it took me a little bit more than five hours. I just zoomed on the autobahn. It was amazing. The I love... I pretty scared. I love Germany. It's great. Yeah. That's fun. I think also the people can drive here. Like a lot idiots, of people can. Of you know, it sucks. Like every time we've, we've gone on the weekends to go to like Prague or someplace, then mm. all the old DDR people are on the roads. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you can't really go that fast. You start to go fast, then you have to slow down because you can't flash your lights anymore. You used no, to be able to like no. blink your lights at them and they're supposed to get out of the flat, fast lane. But now you're, you're not mm -hmm. allowed to do that anymore. So now you just have yeah. to... Sometimes you're allowed to do it, but, well, there are still Porsches and fast Mercedes or BMWs who just want to wipe you off the street. And so I say, okay, but sometimes I get a really, fa I've got the option to take a really fast car, like 220 horsepower and Audi, some turbo in it. And that really makes fun. One of these but days. It's dangerous. I think it was 250 or something like that. So. If I come into any unexpected money, I'm definitely going to get like a 1970 280 SE Mercedes sedan for a staff car for here. Yeah, I like excellent. those. I had excellent. one. I had I had one before. They're so great though. Mm. Yeah, they're they're so fast for how big it is. Yeah, they're so fast. They they when they when those things came out, they were the fastest like sedan car on the planet. Mm. Like normal car, they're just like. For a big old tank, it's just amazing. And they, it, it's like yeah. being in an airplane. Because I would drive mine up to Portland. You'd go 90 miles the whole an hour the whole way from like L.A. 17 hours drive. But just mm. even up the mountains, just going. And no, That's amazing. Police would never pull me over in that thing. It's like the. No. Yeah, just it's, it's like the. I don't know. In Germany, it's different. But in California, it was like the perfect year to where you know they're mm. like oh you're not that's a nice car you're not like super rich so we know you're not being a dick but you're not poor <laughs> you're not poor so you, you know what you're doing we'll leave you alone yeah. <laughs> and they're like you drive that car you know what you're doing mm -hmm. yeah like somebody there's no dents in it somebody's taking care of that thing since 1970 for 40 years so mm. <laughs> you know, it's still running. You're going 90 miles an hour. We're not going to give you a ticket. <laughs> yeah, excellent, excellent. It's always depends on the driver and on the car. I think. Yeah. So probably, I was lucky too. I was blasting through Nevada once. With awesome. It was fast, way too fast because it was so fucking boring. Just a straight highway and everywhere signs. Don't pick up hitchhikers. Prison area. <laughs> and every hundred miles there was a gas station I was happy to talk again and I was just oh my fucking god I was driving like 170 or 180 just zoom through had my feet out because everything was on cruise control but I always thought oh my god a cop got to pull over like in a movie and it's like oh and then my journey's over but I was lucky so I could do that for like 200 miles or 300 what was that band called aqua nebula oscillator no Os um, well, that's the one from from where Shas was in Shasula Nebula. Okay. What were we and looking for? Drip. Okay. Well, oscillation. Oscillation. What oscillation? And there are really lots of videos. Up. But I think I put you one on the Dropbox. So let me check for a second. Maybe I need to grab those discs because I'm I feel bad now. Because. 
I'm not going to try and... I, I could put you the song Future Echo in. It's really, really good. It's comparable. But it's crowd rocky. It's electronic. It's psychedelic. It's different. It has that. It's, not, it's nothing comparable where I say, well, it sounds like that band or like that band. And that's good for me. I haven't... Oh. It doesn't look like I've unzipped that thing yet. Because I'm still trying to figure but out... it's in the new one. It's in the new one. You said you installed the application. And then I sent you a screenshot a few hours ago, and then and yeah, but the, I, the Dropbox shows up in your places on your Mac. Yeah, I'm looking right. Open Drop Dropbox folder. Yes. Um, and it's only the only ones that I have is like, f fucking, you know what, like. It's so ridiculous. Astro Daisy keeps sending me shit like Nani's ninth house research. Like people have sent me so since I've had this Dropbox, people have sent me the weirdest shit like nonstop now. People I didn't even know had knew that I was on it. People are sending me whole records and stuff. So I'm really confused as how to find that stuff. I've but got... I think that was before you installed the application before. Like, mm -hmm. when you send somebody a Dropbox link, then they can download it as a zip file. But when you join okay. the, actually the application and when you have it installed on your computer, mm -hmm. then you're a full member and then you can use it like drag and drop. Yeah. And then you're asked always if you want to be participant of that shared folder or not. Well, So you can say no. Let me just look really quick um, what's going on. Uh, oh, there should be a folder called Anton in it. Yeah, I'm just looking to, to see if I have a YouTube link. I mean, a, um, a notification. Just... I don't know. <clears throat> a, a, a link, like maybe like in Facebook or some shit? Should I look in there? I, I can check. Hang on a second. Just send you one. Let me see. Simulation future echo. Well, uh, here's the screenshot that you were talking about. But you'll send me a link? Yeah, I'm gonna send you a link. To what? Facebook or where? Uh, no, to you. for that oscillation band. Yeah, where are you going to send the link to? Skype. Okay. That nobody sees it. Haha. -ha. Here we are in the future using technology. Okay, let's yeah. see. Um, no, also, talking about bands, also Chile has a really, really good band uh, scene with a few really nice bands, which are pretty passionate and... So I can okay. So we'll just do it this way. A few can can send a few songs from Chile bands too. Got, got this other. And there's also. Go ahead. And there's also somebody in the UK started a really cool fan scene last year. I saw it's that. Optical sounds. Yeah. That's amazing. That's really. I never had such a nice music mag in my hand before. So volume three is ju just issued, and. If you don't, like, for, for people who have no clue about Spaceman 3 or other bands, it's just so much love was put in all that research that people can in, interviews, really detailed information about the bands, pretty personal, good record recommendations. It's worth the three pounds and probably it costs you a lot, like four pounds ordering it overseas. Yeah, I've got there. There's also an ice cream out there. You should Vita do a Cola. screenshot of this. Yeah. So it's you and Vita Cola. That's so German right there. It's like yeah. you and Vita Cola. Vita yeah. Cola, Vita. <laughs> yeah, but if, if you have the chance to see it in the supermarket, try it out. The yeah. ice cream? <sighs> yeah. It's super, super sour and Coke flavored. Well, then. I am an artist and the mother of three beautiful girls. I believe that my very best painting will never compare to 
the satisfaction I get being a mother. My name is Cassandra Barney, and I'm a Mormon. Pretty cool. So I just saw that and said, oh my god, I need that. I always buy that kind of shit when I see something different. Because I get bored once in a while in a supermarket. It's weird because we're probably, you know, I'm probably going to get this studio all set up right as the EU crashes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they're going to go, we have enough problems of our own, Anton. You need to go home. <laughs> No, they'll probably say you. It's okay. I guess a lot of people are pissed off. You know what? A lot of people have been moving here from Swabia to Berlin. Mm. The cab drivers. I think are, so too. I think the, so too. Yeah. The cab drivers are like, these fucking assholes are all moving up here. What's going on? <laughs> they don't like them. Weird, huh? Yeah, uh, pretty weird. But well, it's an open city, and so many nationalities live there already. Yeah, but they were like, see, it's it's young people with money down there. I like fuck it. I'm gonna move to Berlin and buy a flat for like sixty thousand. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to live in. That's where this is hot. We gotta move mm -hmm. here, like really quick. It's amazing. Like in the last year, all of a sudden, like a lot of people, like you know, younger people in Germany are like, fuck it, man. I'm gonna move to Berlin. It's kicking off in Berlin now. Because hmm. I was, it was even like five years ago. Five years ago, that was insane. Just mm. in comparison to Munich, the rents you could get a really like hundred square meters, high walls, and all yeah. of that. And really, in, like also in areas like Prenzlauer Berg, yeah. which where the rents are now way higher than way like high. five years ago. Yeah. And or people said, well, you can live in there two or three months for free yeah because everything was empty yeah i think now they do that still at marsan or somewhere they've got but they, definitely not in the hip spots anymore they've got some crazy stuff though they've got like people keep picking new neighborhoods right to move mm -hmm. into um but let me see so oh i'm looking Okay, isn't that great, man? One of these programs, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, it's like the bestest loader one mm -hmm. where, you, where it just puts a button on the YouTube. I love it. That one's good it's for just this, click, click, click. Just for one, one video, but when we're talking, you know, that's what's going to make that one. See, those videos actually play on this Ustream, you know? Yeah. Where, whereas mm -hmm. the bulk the bulk loader is just good for songs, but it's so cool. Yeah. Like we're just talking like that. Now I have that that track to play, and of course we just play. You know we're just helping people out by spreading the word. Mm -hmm. I guess the That's crocodiles cool. finished the record. Will told me. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't. Even, I don't know them or met met them. It's so weird that they came over here. You know all these groups because I, I I would think yeah. that you know we I'd be recording them or something. All right, mm. sit in with people. Okay, people, good. people aren't into it. Nobody wants to meet me. Uh, Either that or they want me to go to the bar and meet them. Like like once a week, somebody's in town and they're like, dude, I'd really like to come and meet you. And I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> I, can't, I can't hang out in a bar with you getting drunk that I don't even know you. Mm. <laughs> Weird, should we listen to yeah, the song? I've had hard times too. Hard times too getting drunk with somebody because I hardly drink anyway. So Good for you. See, we're like yeah, a good influence no. besides the smoking. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's really, I'm, I'm really a heavy smoker. I smoke like 30 a day or something like that. But somehow alcohol, I really had lots of problems with my stomach, like gastritis and all that Ooh. shit. But for like five years, okay. I got skinny like a matchstick. And alcohol just, it's, I've got an aftermath of it just physically like three days and it definitely doesn't, it's not worth the short entertainment. I have a beer once in a while, but yeah. that's just like a good piece of chocolate because I can't eat chocolate because I've, I've got problems with milk products. So that's my chocolate once in a while, a beer. <laughs> God. <laughs> Keeps me healthy. Well, I, I guess, something. 
All right. Well, I got this. Right. I got this pumpkin. So we're gonna check out this group. This is Excellent. this is for fall. Hey, <laughs> we, we didn't ask you how um how it went over in um how did Oktoberfest go? Uh, Oktoberfest. Well, I went to the city on Sunday, and well, you saw really ugly dimples all the time. Yeah. You saw the like shock. Old lederhosen are cool, like when yeah. you really know, well, that's traditional yeah. and the farmers wear it every day or yeah. every weekend when they go out and want to look pretty. Yeah. But everything looks like, like carnival, you know? Yeah, you know, they, so they, cause they sell, they sell that shit at H&M and all that stuff, you know? Yeah, and even in, even in, in, because I met a good friend and our hotspot is always the central station in Munich. Yeah. So we hardly see each other anyway. And so we were at our good place at the Burger King later for having a little snack. And even there, they sell the, all the people at Burger King. They had T-shirts on with Lederhosen yeah. on it. <laughs> and, or the Dindel, and they had special things. And all the prices were like 30% more. Oh, crap. Too. Wow. And you saw about... Commercialism. Yeah. And, 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 and you saw girls... Who had who wore the same dirndl like ten? So at the beginning, so hmm, ma, that's okay. But when you see like ten, yeah, it just gets oh my. God. Made in China, right? Yeah, made in China or made in whatever. Yeah, um, Pakistan by six-year-olds. Um, yeah, and and it's funny because my mom she really works very very close to the Oktoberfest where the Oktoberfest place is. Okay. And when she drives out out of her garage, then when people. It can happen that people just lie on her car and just won't go away. Oh yeah, yeah. So she always went to get, I know. Like, I grew. I, just... I grew up in Newport Beach, and it's like that all summer long. You know, it's just mm. all the houses, most of them, you know, are all like summer rentals, yeah. half the year, you know, and the price mm. is like, you know, like four thousand a week or something to stay in these. Mm. You know, uh, yeah, and then the, then it'll be like twelve hundred. Or you know probably twenty five hundred. They're probably way more than that now. But anyways, when I was a kid, it would be like, you know, fourteen hundred for a month for six months, and then it would be like twenty five hundred a week for the other six months mm. just to stay in these houses. You know, crazy. Yeah, not for me, but every single house was like that. Besides people that that lived there that were from there, like friends and stuff but um and all those people you know it'd be like 20 people running out of house and a mm. party in every house just like for miles you know it was so crazy growing up because it was like do you know what i mean even yeah. once we were like 12 it was just non-stop party we just like go to yeah. people's places and take steal all their alcohol just, yeah just like crazy like it's a pack of animals on bicycles just nonstop, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, but just all the problems with that, just drunken weirdness and police everywhere. Yeah, yeah here too at the weekend because I live here pretty much in tourist central where yeah. people go on holidays. It's like yeah, close to the Schamberger See where the King Lu King Lu King Lu of Bavaria drowned yeah. himself. Yeah. Drowned himself. Yeah. So at the weekend, your holly can so go. At the weekend, your holly can go to you lake you or yeah. somewhere. And you really yeah. need to know your you really need to know your way they just because completely. otherwise you just. Can't. All the beer gardens are filled with drunken, weird, loud people. Uh, but, you know what I was going to say is down at the gallery. I missed it this year, but they have like some pretty expensive. You know, they always have in the store window, they have like the, 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 the Bavarian costume, you know, for the girl and the guy, they have some really nice ones, yeah. you know what I mean? Really expensive, but yeah. they have like a really nice, like sort of Bavarian Austrian type, you know, guys thing, like a nice mm. wool jacket, nice wool jacket. Some really, yeah. so cool. I, I wanted to get one. Like it's so cool. Not, not, not. Yeah, the traditional stuff. It's not. Really it's not traditional. It's, 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 it is traditional style, but it's really nice. I was like, fuck. Yeah. But it's like you know that. It's. It would be. It's. It would be several hundred euros. So I was just like. Man. Yeah, I know. I know that the nice stuff is really expensive. Uh, yeah, I like to look nice, but I'm like, uh, that's pretty expensive. <laughs> yeah, maybe you get lucky. Maybe you get lucky. We. Right now we've got in like 15 kilometers away, there is kind of a 
garage sale oh. and for all kinds of traditional stuff. Shit. I should give you my sizes. <laughs> yeah, you should send it to me. I, I can I can have a look. I have to see what's shaking there. I have to figure out what, what size I am. Okay, let's listen to the oscillation. How's that? Excellent. All right. I'll let you go then. Okie dokie. Thanks for visiting. Yeah, thank you, Anton. Bye. Ooh. Here we go.